That was the gospel that Jesus preached. And it should be also the gospel that we preach. Every place we go, we preach the gospel of the kingdom. King Jesus is here, and what do you want me to do for you? Now, turn to Mark chapter 4. See, I'm just, I'm just talking about the message right now. This is the message. Is that 15? Okay. This is the message. Mark 4, verse 23 and 24. It says, Jesus went into all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Healing all sickness or every sickness and every disease. Is that what your Bible says? Is that what it says? Healing everywhere. And then the 24th verse says, And they brought to him all that were sick and all that were diseased and all those that were possessed with devils. And Jesus healed them all. So may I say this to your friends? Sin and sickness cannot exist in the kingdom of God. Sin and sickness cannot exist in the kingdom of God. Wherever the kingdom of God is truly preached and demonstrated, sin and sickness will be banished. Amen. I mean, I prove this. Not only have we lived in it, but every place we go, when we preach this, sin and sickness dissipates. People get out of sin, and people get free from sickness and disease. And when we leave with the message... We leave the message with them because the gospel is the power of God. We leave that message with them and they continue in that and their, their regions are changed, their lives are changed, their homes are changed. But again, this is the message of the kingdom. This is the proof of the kingdom of God that sin and sickness will not exist there. Matthew 9 and 35 says the same thing. It says, this time he went about into all the villages teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. So what is the message that Jesus came to preach? The kingdom of heaven is here. King Jesus and his dominion is here. What do you want Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? Are we clear? What's the message? The kingdom of heaven is here. King Jesus is here. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely I receive, freely give it away. Now, what was the method by which Jesus did this? Now remember, all of the works that Jesus did were done as a man anointed of the Holy Spirit. He did not do those as God, because if he did those as God, then he was wrong to tell us that we could do the same works that he did in greater works, as he told us in John chapter 14 and verse 12. Isn't that right? So he had to do those things as a man anointed of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 and verse 10, Jesus said this. He said, it's the Father in me that does the works. He said, believe me at least for the work's sake, because these works that I came to do, they're not my works, they're the works of the Father. And then he said this, verily, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Greater works than these shall you do, not because you fast and pray for long hours, but because Jesus has gone to the Father. And whatever you ask, that word ask carries the implication of commanding and demanding. We ask of God, we command the demand of the devil. We command the demand of the circumstances, the situations, of that sickness. Sickness, you bow to the name of Jesus. Pain, you leave in Jesus' name. You demand that. You don't ask God to take that away. Jesus didn't do that. So whatever you ask, whatever you command, whatever you demand in my name, Jesus said, I'll see to it that it's done. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Praise God. So what are the issues here? The method. First and foremost, it's authority or dominion. Jesus didn't pray. He did not ask the Father to heal the people. He used the authority given to him by his Father. He uttered a command. Lazarus, come forth. Daughter, arise. He used the spoken word, be healed. In the case of the devil, he said, come out. It's amazing to me. Jesus spoke very little words. He didn't have long, drawn-out battles with the devil. He spoke a word. He cast out, the Bible says, the spirits with a word. Go. Leave. Come out. Shut up. Very, very simple. Be healed. Arise. Come forth. He didn't quote, listen, he did not quote scriptures over the sick person or to devils. Now, he did that in the temptation in the wilderness. But when it came time to heal people, he did not quote scriptures over them. Neither did Paul or any other person in the Bible. The devil doesn't care how much scripture you know or quote. If you don't command him to go, he doesn't have to go. Now, 
This is a small issue here. We just address this, the word rebuke. And so we say, Satan, I rebuke you. Devil, I rebuke you. Sickness, I rebuke you. The word rebuke has to have a phrase that follows it. All the rebuke means is a correction. So if my son said to me, or if he was doing something wrong and I went to my son and I wanted to correct him, I said, Joe, I rebuke you. And so he'd stand there and say, okay, you're, you're about to correct me. But if all I say is I rebuke you, Joe, I didn't tell him, I didn't correct him, I didn't tell him what to do. So every time you see rebuke in the Bible where Jesus rebuked the devil, he rebuked the sickness and disease, it followed when he, he gave a command. He told it what to do. You understand that? So rebuke in the Bible, we say, I rebuke you, devil. He's going to stand there and say, okay, you're getting ready to correct me. You're getting ready to command me. So now what do you want me to do? Because he has to obey you. He has to, he has to bow to the name of Jesus. He has to do what you tell him to do. If you tell him to go, he's got to go. You don't have to fight him. But if he says, I rebuke you, Satan. He said, okay, what you're saying is I'm getting ready to, to correct you. I'm getting ready to give you a command. And then you leave and you never tell him to do anything. So the devil doesn't care how much scripture you know, go. If you don't command him to go, he doesn't have to go. This is the dominion of God that God has given us. And every single born-again believer gets this. We get this the day we're born again. I'm talking about the method. Okay, secondly, it's power. The transmitting of God's power. Jesus transmitted the power of the Spirit of God in a number of different ways. But mostly, for the main part, it was either him touching people or people touching him. Now, go over to Luke chapter 4. Real quick. I'm almost done. Luke chapter 4. Now Jesus, as I said, he used many different methods. But for the most part, it was him touching people or people touching him. And this is the most prevalent way in such of the fact that Jesus commissioned us to heal the sick in this way. Look at Luke chapter 4, verse 40. It says, Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers or different diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them, and he healed them. How I many of you see that? See, uh, this is the main ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the, the law of contact and transmission. People are touching Jesus, he's touching them. I'm not saying that you have to do this all the time. I'm just saying this is the main method. And Jesus believed in this so much that he commissioned every single believer to go and lay hands on the sick and they would recover. So he says in verse 21, uh, verse 41, And devils also came out many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into the desert place, and, he, and people saw him, and came unto him, and stayed him, and he should not depart from them. Now, let me just stop here. He started in verse 40 uh, at the setting of the sun. And he went all night... He prayed for every single one of them, laid his hands on every single one of them until the sun came up again. Do you see that? See, that's the message, that's the method by which, for the most part, that Jesus laid hands on every person. That's why, that's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for. I command that devil to go. I command that sickness to go. That's got to bow, that's got to bow to the name of Jesus. It's got to obey me. But that body may be damaged. The house may have some damage. That house may need to have to be put back in order. So what has to happen? You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You'll be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and under the othermost parts of the earth. Now hear me, friends. Listen. All you have to do is put your hot little hands on somebody. Now it's up to God to prove whether his word of God is true. See, it's not a matter of faith. I said it's not a matter of faith. The faith is the doing it. Amen. The power of God is going to go in there when I put my hands on. So it's not a matter of faith. It's a matter of integrity of the word. You got that? See, I don't have to worry about faith. I don't have to be concerned about faith. God gave me his faith the day I got saved. Now what is at stake? It's God's reputation. It's God's word. It's his integrity is at stake. And when I put my hands on that person, now... That, that, it's, it's not a matter of faith anymore. Now it's a matter of God's word. Is it true or is it not? You see that? See, this, the struggle's over, friends. This is not me struggling trying to make this thing happen. All faith is is doing what we're commanded to do and believing that when you do it, God will work. That's all it is. I don't have to figure out how it's going to work. I don't have to figure out how to make it work. 